please welcome on stage the CEO of Rimac Automobili, Mate Rimac. Hello, everybody. So I have 15 minutes and 67 slides. Let's see how that works out. So I think for doing something like we are doing, uh, passion is really important. So I'll show you now first uh, how to embarrass yourselves in front of 500 people. So oh, it does work, of course. So this was me. As you can see, I was so crazy about cars that I didn't even go to the toilet without my <laughs> toy cars. Uh, so why I love cars? Uh, it's really strange. Like my parents tell me that I was crazy about cars before I could walk or talk. And I was born in Bosnia in a part uh, where there were basically no roads. Uh, when at that time, like my family didn't have anything to do with cars. I was just crazy about cars all my life. And today, like if I try to think about why I love cars, because for me it's like the combination of everything. Art and all of the sciences that humanity is aware of today, like uh, materials, software, uh, mechanical simulations, uh, um, electronics, uh, fluid dynamics. The cars are basically the combination of all human knowledge, and at the same time, they are also pieces of art, in my opinion. So this is our new car. Uh, I think it's beautiful, but for me, the really important thing is what's going on behind the hood. So just to tell you like our uh, initial story, so. Um, I was an average student in high school, so when the war started in, in ex-Yugoslavia, my parents moved to, to Germany, where we spent 10 years, and then we moved back to Croatia, and I wasn't really great at school, but I was always fooling around with something in my garage. So I did this as a school project, and my professor liked it, and he sent me to a competition where I thought I had no chance, uh, because I wasn't a great student. Uh, but surprisingly, I won the le local award for uh, electronics, and then they sent me to the national level, where I surprisingly won as well, and then they sent me all over the world to represent Croatia in these exhibitions. So this was in Korea and so on. But my uh, real passion was cars. So as soon as I turned 18, I bought a 1984 uh, BMW 3 Series, which was four years older than myself, and I did really stupid things to that. So as you can see here. So the car didn't last for very long, of course, so this happened quite soon. <laughs> And looking at the bonnet behind, uh, under the, un, uh, in the hole under the bonnet of this rusty old car, I was thinking, so what to do now? And uh, being crazy about electronics and cars, I wanted to combine my two passions. And being from Croatia, I read a lot about this guy in the right, so who knows who that is? Yes, that's Nikola Tesla. He was born in Croatia as well. So I was always fascinated by him. And at that time, electric cars were really boring and slow and dull and ugly. And I wanted to prove that electric cars don't have to be boring, slow and dull. Um, so I took this BMW, painted it green, uh, put in a forklift motor, electric motor, a bunch of batteries, and started racing. And I went to racetracks, and everybody was laughing at me, like, what the hell are you doing with this on the racetrack? Like, why, did, why are you showing up with a wash machine uh, on the racetrack? Or like, can we ch charge the phone on your car and stuff like that? Um, and at the beginning, I had lots of problems, like every time something would break or the batteries would burn, the motor would burn. Um, but after every race, I got back home and improved the car. And the car got better and better, faster and faster. Then I started winning, so this was 2010, which was the first time, as far as I'm aware in history, where an electric car won against gas-powered cars uh, on the race uh, with the same regulations. So I had no electric cars to race against at that time. So today it seems obvious, but like ten, then, it, just 10 years ago, it was totally different. Then Tesla from California came with the roadsters saying they had the fastest electric car in the world. Not really sure about that. And I was using this car every day to go uh, to university and then during the weekends um, to uh, race. And then in 2011, the car got really fast and I broke five FIA and Guinness World Records for the fastest accelerating car. So uh, this was a great learning curve, but my real idea was to build my own car. Like, uh, I knew that it was difficult, that hundreds of people have tried and failed, but two guys made it, Christian von Koenigsegg from Sweden and Horatia Pogani from Italy. But I was just one guy in a garage, uh, and I wanted to build the world's fastest electric car. Uh, and why this picture? Because, uh, I'll come back to that later, but uh, electric cars at that time <laughs> were actually something like this, you know, not really sexy and so on. And Croatia, 
didn't have really any heritage in the car industry, so some of you who might have traveled there some years ago might have seen this, the Yugo, uh, which isn't really Croatia, it's now in, Bos in Serbia. Um, Croatia is really a beautiful, wonderful country, I love it. Uh, I'm obviously biased, but I think it's the most beautiful country in the world. Um, but not for business and not for technology. So if you Google um, automotive industry in Europe, this is the picture you'll get, and pretty much the only country here that doesn't have any dots is Croatia. <laughs> And just to put things into perspective, like Croatia has 4 million people and 60 billion GDP, Hyundai car company is four times the revenue of Croatia's GDP. One company. So getting funding was the most difficult thing for the company. Uh, I was, that was basically my main job in the last 10 years. I was always struggling to survive, to keep the company going, so I had to spend a lot of time with guys like this. And this is a whole story on its own, which I don't have time for. This was really difficult. The most difficult part was getting the funding. And as we weren't, were not funded, you know, in the beginning we had, like, I couldn't pay salaries, I couldn't pay the rent for the facility, I couldn't pay the electricity bills, the electricity company would cut our electricity, and this is how the early days looked like. We would sleep on the floors, not go home for days, and just work our asses off. Um, and I mean, still today it looks sometimes like this, but not so much anymore. Uh, but in 2011, we managed to show the first car. We were actually eight employees when we showed the car in the Frankfurt Motor Show. Um, and this was the first real electric hypercar. And from this little garage in 2010, we are now more than 600 people in many locations, uh, not just in Croatia, but also others, and growing really fast. And this is investment in Croatian tech companies, so light blue is everything that's not us, dark blue is us, so we have attracted 150 million funding so far, so Hyundai, Kia and Porsche have invested in us, so we have attracted more investment than all of Croatian companies um, combined. So we are really wanting also to show that it's possible to do that in a place like Croatia. And for me it was always about, you know, not just creating a company and product, but also being a really great company to work for, so I wanted our team is really as a family, and we are a little bit crazy, so. This is our Christmas party. And quite international, which is normal for, for uh, companies in the world, but in Croatia it's totally unheard of because Croatians usually move abroad to Germany and US to work for foreign companies to get people to Croatia. It's quite unique. But the whole point was uh, not just to make an electric car, but to make a car that's better. So with electric powertrains, you can do stuff that's not possible with traditional powertrains. So you have four electric motors, for example, in our car, and with that we are controlling every wheel separately, and you can do stuff that's not possible with a traditional car. But when I started, I wanted to uh, you know, ask somebody for help, and since there is no car industry in Croatia, there was nobody to ask for help. I went to the University of Mechanical Engineering and told them I want to build a car in Croatia, and they told me it's impossible to build a car in Croatia. The sooner you give up, the less people will go under with you. Who knows what happened a couple of days later? <laughs> this. <laughs> he was actually flying 110 meters. <laughs> so the business of the company is cars, our own cars, which you have seen. This is the old model, which you have seen in the video, and now we are developing a new model. And in the car, we showcase what we can do, and then sell the technologies to other car companies, helping them to make electric cars. So in the beginning, we were doing prototypes, and then now we are doing like small volumes, and the next step for the company is to go into high volume projects, like hundred thousands of units and so on. So we work for a lot of the car companies. Um, basically, everybody who is doing something with electric cars is coming to us. So now we are developing a new car. Of course, the numbers are crazy, but it's much more about the technology inside. So it has like a supercomputer, uh, nine cameras, 
12 uh, ultrasonic sensors uh, for autonomous driving, uh, radars and stuff like that. Um, 1,900 horsepower, under two seconds, zero to 100 and so on. So by far the fastest, the fastest accelerating, the most powerful car ever built, regardless of combustion engine, hybrid or whatever. Um, and user experience is super important for us. So it's not just about the numbers. We, I mean, I'm a perfectionist and I want to make sure that everything is really on a high level. So it's not enough just to build a car that has crazy numbers. So the user experience and infotainment is really important, but I'll come to that. So also what we are very proud of is that we have built all of these capabilities in Croatia to develop a full car from scratch, which this know-how didn't exist at all, not, none of that, uh, like seven, eight years ago. We had to build all of that up. And we are using lots of software tools. Uh, this is just a, like a top level overview. We have lots of more tools, uh, like for CAD development, for the engineering simulations and stuff like that. And Qt is a very important part of the user experience um, and of the infotainment development. So the car is important for us as it throws off a lot of technologies that we then use otherwise, one of them also being the infotainment system. And as part of the uh, projects, unfortunately, we have to crash a lot of these cars as well. So there you see two million euros going into a wall many times over. So that's part of the project. But I think, you know, when you look at cars, I mean, there's other products that are complex. There's other products that have use interaction, like let's say a plane, it's super expensive, you know, people's life depend on it as well. But do you really care what the feeling of the click of the button is? or if the user interface is super nice to see. Of course, it's important that you see all the infor important information, but uh, a car is, I think, in that regard special, that you know, it has to work, it has to be, in our case, super fast, it has to be safe, but at the same time, uh, the user experience of every little detail counts. Like, what happens when you touch a button? Like, is the touch of this button exactly the same like the sound when you touch this button? Like, Get, get in an expensive car like an Audi, and you will see that any button in the car, when you push it, has the same touch and feel. Um, and it comes from like, the, this button comes from one supplier, this comes from another, and this one comes from another. So they pay attention to these kind of things. Like, big car companies have hundreds of people working on sounds. Like, what happens, like, how does it sound when you close the door? Uh, and they spend a lot of time and energy on that. So I think cars are quite unique in that regard. So for us, the design process, is not just the designing of the car, it's everything. It's, uh, you know, the coloring, trims, uh, how the components look like, how does it look like when you open the bonnet, uh, the app on your phone, the uh, way the screens start up when you open the door, all of that is part of the design process. So it all starts with sketches and rough concepts, and we go more and more detailed. And of course, in everything we do, we try to intervene our design DNA. So we try to figure out what is our design DNA, and we try to have that everywhere, in our infotainment, in our um, um, mobile app, and so on. So all of these iterations are going very quickly, and the great thing uh, by using Qt is that these designers and the uh, engineers have a quick way to communicate and figure out what works and what doesn't pretty fast. Um, so one thing is the experience in the car itself. Another thing is the experience outside the car. So we are also using Qt for that, so the app. So we are monitoring all the cars to know what's going on, and like if there is a problem with the car, we know uh, how to react immediately. And on the other side, the user has his own interface where they can see um, how the car behaves and open like windows or start the heating and stuff like that. So for us, the next phase of the company is to really expand. We are working on a new location, on a new campus, so I'll show you that. That's quite something cool. We, we are doing that in a uh, forest, actually, just outside of Zagreb in Croatia. It has a 15th century castle on it. So this will be our R&D, and behind it is our production. Um, so uh, quite a big project, uh, 4,500 employees. Um, so this will be built in the next two years. We will design and build our cars there. So that's quite an important project for us. But you guys are more interested in the user interface and the and infotainment system and so on. So our guys here have some demos. You can see them outside. So where, where is our team, the remote team? Are you guys here? Where are you? Ah, there. So you can talk to them. They are using uh, the Qt system and developing all of this stuff that you have seen here every day for years. And we are very open to share any experience and information that you 
uh, are interested in. So uh, I hope you, you like what we are doing. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can contact me always. Thank you very much.